Okay, we're going to wrap up now. We're going to move on to Asian citrus psyllid. This is a pest of agriculture. We've talked about gold spotted oak borer, a pest of our, an invasive pest of our wilderness areas in the Cleveland National Forest. We've talked about red palm weevil, an invasive pest affecting our palm trees in our urban areas around Laguna Beach. Now we're going to finish up talking about Asian citrus psyllid, a pest of California citrus. California citrus is worth about $1.2 billion a year. It's an iconic crop for the state. It's arguable that California's economic well-being, or even the trajectory to prosperity, is because of citrus and the early development of that crop here when California was a young state. Wherever Asian citrus psyllid has gone, the adults shown here, and the nymphs with all the white wax hanging from them here, these are the adults, these are the nymphs, they can acquire a bacterial disease. And this bacteria lives in the xylem, in the phloem, or the food conducting tubes of these citrus trees. And it multiplies and it kills the tree. The insect on its own is not so bad. It's the bacteria that it spreads which kills the trees. That's the big problem that we're dealing with. However, our natural enemies in our foreign exploration and our biological control program is obviously targeting the insect. In California, we have discovered no natural enemies, or in particular, no parasitic wasps attacking the nymphs of Asian citrus psyllid. So let's put this in some perspective. Florida detected uh, the disease in about 2005. And within four years of the detection of that disease, they lost 10% of their citrus acreage, or about 60,000 acres, in about four to five years. That is unbelievable. And there's no cure for this disease. 60,000 acres wiped out by this disease in about a four to five year period. Is California going to be looking at a similar fate? There's no reason to think that we shouldn't be. Because Asian citrus psyllid and this disease, Huang Long Bing, or citrus greening, has done the same thing everywhere it's gone. Why would California be any different? It's an example of something that's just born bad. And this is an example of what the disease does. You can see the trees here have become very thin, all the leaves have fallen off, they don't produce any fruit. This happens about four to five years, maybe up to eight years, depending on the citrus variety, after the initial infestation. And the only solution is to chop down all those trees and remove that disease source from your fields. So where is this insect and where is the disease native to? Well, some of the earliest publications on Asian citrus psyllid came out of Pakistan in 1927 by two entomologists, uh, Muhammad Hussein and Dina Nath. And a lot of people have looked at this and think, hmm, it's probably likely that Asian citrus psyllid is native to the Punjab area of the sub-Indian continent, shown here with a red circle. And what else you'll notice on this map is that area is yellow. It is considered to be a type of desert. Most of our citrus in California is grown in the Central Valley, which is also a kind of desert, very dry, very hot over the summer, and quite cold and miserable during the winter. Well, this part of the Indian subcontinent is ex almost, well, it's 72% the same, because I did climate matching software modeling to figure out how similar is the climate here in Pakistan to the Central Valley of California, where we grow most of our citrus. So the idea is, if that area has a good climatic match with our citrus producing areas, any natural enemies that we bring back from Pakistan to establish here in California should be pretty well adapted to the climate. You wouldn't want to take a wimpy parasitoid, say from, I don't know, somewhere, say Malaysia, for example, where it's warm and humid, and stick it in Bakersfield where it's boiling hot over the summer and cold over the winter with almost no humidity. So one of the things we do is we look for areas in the world that have a similar climate to California and where the invasive species is also native. That will give us, hopefully, the highest probability of finding a natural enemy that is well adapted to California's climate. So we have visited Pakistan twice, worked there for a month approximately each time we've been, and we've had some excellent cooperation with farmers in the fields. Three cups of tea with some of the owners. Familiar with that book? Yes, excellent. And we have a lab at the University of Agriculture in Faisalabad in Agri, the Department of Agri-Entomology. So you can see us working here with the, with the students that are helping us. We go out, we gather up thousands of psyllids from these fields, put them in these little bottle cages, and then we rear out the parasites. 
we bottle up the parasites to bring them home to California to take them to that sophisticated quarantine facility that I showed you earlier. Okay? So we have permits to do all this. And it's extremely difficult getting these permits because I'm asking to move live insects from Pakistan to California in the United States in a box that nobody is allowed to open. <laughs> so we jump on the plane in Pakistan, we touch down in Heathrow Airport, and we're about to get on our plane to go to the States. My passport goes under the scanner and the alarms go off. The guy goes, that's weird. That's never happened. So you go, so, <laughs> the alarms go off again. Homeland Security has just been notified that I'm on a direct flight from Pakistan to the United States with a box that nobody can open. <laughs> so we get dragged off to one side and the Homeland Security guy from the United States is waiting for us in Heathrow. So we get interrogated, well, we get debriefed about what we have been doing there and what's in the box and all this sort of stuff for about 15 minutes or so. Everything seems okay and we're released and we get on the plane. Get to LAX. Passport goes under the scanner again, alarms go off, we get dragged off for a much more thorough debriefing this time. So, it, it, so, it, so that point shows you that yes, you're being watched and people know where you're moving even though you don't know that's happening. So anyway, no problems, we got the parasites from Pakistan to California safely. But this was a problem we experienced a lot in Pakistan. This is called load shedding. Now load shedding is a problem because they have insufficient production of electricity. Now electricity comes and goes for most of the day. And if you're lucky, you may get up to six hours of electricity a day. So you're working in the lab and suddenly the lights go off and you can't use the microscopes, there's no water, no internet, nothing. And when it happens at night, well, it really sucks. Because now you have to wear your Petzl and work through with an emergency light, which you've had to buy at these shops and recharge them up so you can keep working at night time makes it extremely difficult to do these jobs. Also blows your research budget because you weren't expecting to buy half of this equipment because you had no idea that load shedding was going to be a problem. Or as they tell you on TV all the time, load shedding. And the guy comes up, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is um, Shokat Zaman Khan. He's a master's student here at the University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. And he is doing his MS degree in Pakistan on the natural enemies of Asian citrus psyllid for us so we can figure out what are the best natural enemies to bring back to California to fight this insect that's potentially threatening our citrus production. This is my wife Christina and this is our harvest. This is the box that you weren't allowed to open that we were bringing back to uh, Riverside, the quarantine facility. The good news, and I will share this with you, some of the first people to know this, is that we have successfully reared out two different types of parasitoid that attack Asian citrus psyllid. We have established colonies of these in our quarantine facility now. We're doing the safety tests and hopefully by the end of summer we will be preparing an environment assessment report to hand over to the USDA and the California Department of Food and Agriculture, demonstrating that these parasites from Pakistan are not going to cause undue environmental damage and hopefully we will be given permission to release these and establish them in California to try and control Asian citrus psyllid.